Welcome once again to Heart of a Shepherd. We are in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, as our scripture reading. The title of our devotional today is, What Will You Do With Jesus? I do invite you to open your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 26. Well, Jesus had been teaching his disciples from the Mount of Olives, beginning in chapter 24 and verse 3. Now, as he looked west, he gazed upon the glorious temple in his beloved city of Jerusalem. He had taught his disciples the signs that preceded his second coming in chapters 24 and 25. And yet, the disciples were blinded by ambition. They did not grasp the imminence of the events that would cause them, the disciples, to flee and deny the Lord. And finally, leaving no doubt of his appointment with the cross, Jesus said plainly, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Matthew 26 and verse 2. Matthew then recounted in his gospel several historical scenes after Jesus revealed that the observance of the Passover would coincide with him being betrayed to be crucified. First of all, we have the the scene of the assembly of the Sanhedrin in verses 3 through 5. And here we find the Sanhedrin representing four religious offices. There was Caiaphas, the high priest, verse 3. And then the chief priests, uh, the religious nobility of Israel, the scribes, the majority of whom were Pharisees and experts in the law, and then the elders who typically were wealthy laymen who held a powerful presence in Jewish society. Now in verse 4, those men assembled for one purpose, and we read that they might take Jesus by subtlety, that is, by guise and deceit, and kill him. Imagine the religious leadership of the nation plotting murder. Then, notice with me verses 6 through 16. And here we have a Sabbath meal six days prior. Now, this second scene was a throwback to an earlier event that we have already considered in previous Bible studies in John chapter 12 and Mark chapter 14. Now, Jesus and his disciples had enjoyed a a Sabbath meal at the house of Simon the leper six days before the Passover. Now, Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, you might remember, had interrupted the supper and anointed Jesus with an alabaster box of very precious ointment. And we read in verse 7 that she poured it on his head. Matthew recalled the disciples objecting to what they felt was a wasteful use of this precious ointment. Jesus, however, rebuked them, and he said in verse 11 and then verse 12, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. The implication my death and burial. Now verse 13, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached to the whole world, there shall also this, that which Mary has done, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Well, coming to verses 14 through 16, here we have a record of Judas meeting with the chief priests to betray Jesus. A chafing from the rebuke he rightfully received for his greed and protest, we read, verse 14, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, in verse 15, And he said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him, that is Jesus, unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And we read in verse 16, And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him, that is, betray Jesus. Then verse 17, to the end of the chapter, we have the preparation. In Jesus' last Passover with his, with his disciples and also his betrayal. Now Matthew records the preparation for the Passover meal, verses 17 through 19, which was indeed our Lord's last supper with his disciples. Now, though Jesus had foretold he would be betrayed, 
none suspected Judas. What the church, uh, church observes today as the Lord's Supper is actually taken from the Lord's Passover and instituted as a perpetual memorial to Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Now, when the observance of the Passover was ended, Jesus and the disciples, we read in verse 30, sung a hymn, and they went out into the Mount of Olives. Now, along the way, Jesus foretold the disciples would abandon him that night and fulfill Zechariah's prophecy that the shepherd would be smitten and the sheep would be scattered. And when Peter protested, Jesus foretold that he would deny him three times before sunrise. Well, when they arrived at the Mount of Olives, we read in the scriptures in Matthew's account that Jesus invited Peter, James, and John to retreat into the garden called Gethsemane. Now there, as the disciples slept, we read that Jesus prayed until the hour that he was betrayed into the hands of of his enemies. Now, knowing where Jesus and his disciples would gather, Judas, verse 47 through 49, led the chief priests and elders to the place and there betrayed him with a kiss. Now, several scenes then follow Jesus' arrest beginning in verse 50, including the disciples' flight into the darkness of the night, even as Christ was arrested. We also have the record of the illegal trial before Caiaphas the high priest. We read where the scribes and the elders were assembled, even as Peter thrice denied that he was Christ's disciple. Well, a closing thought. As Judas closed his heart to Christ, he opened his heart to Satan in verse 3 of Luke 22 and betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, which was the price of a slave. His name, the name of Judas, has come to embody sin, wickedness, and the villainy of rejecting Jesus Christ. And tragically, he turned his back on God and rejected Christ and salvation, and the Lord rejected him. Well, allow me to close with a question. What about you? Have you opened your heart to Christ to believe and receive him as your Savior? Why won't you do that now? By simply bowing your head, confessing that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and believing that Christ died for your sins on the cross, was buried raised from the dead. In him we have the hope of not only victory over sin, but eternal life. What a wonderful gift of God's grace. God bless. Thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd. And bye-bye.